Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, Ben the Pack Tester here. Caterham Pack Testing is the channel. Today we're going to be talking about whether you need or should be uh, applying labels to equipment that is pack tested and also should you be keeping records of, of what equipment is done as well. So just a couple of references here. Now if you go onto the HSE website, it says here, do I need to keep records of testing and should I label my appliances? And it says there, there's no legal requirement to label equipment that has been inspected or tested. And there is no requirement to keep records of these activities. However, record labeling can be a useful management tool. Um, I, I think yeah, my personal opinion is stuff should be labeled and records should be kept. Um, and I think it should be a requirement. Um, the, the code of practice also says as well that there's no requirement in the electricity at work regulations to label equipment, although duty holders may find it useful to do so. But if you think about it, if you think about why people are coming to you uh, and requesting pat testing from you, um, they're coming to you because they've probably been asked by a venue or a local authority or someone like that they need to provide proof of pat testing uh, and the easiest way to do that is with the labeling and then subsequently the certificate you might you know people might say to you i, I need a certificate uh, and i'll go into that briefly in a moment um so the first thing when you talk about labels now th these are the labels that i use here um Fairly standard label, slightly better quality than the paper ones you get on the roll. I do a, a personalised one, as you can see here, with logo. I have them pre-printed with the appliance numbers and my name. And then I've got the, the 2021 date there, so I just have to add in the, the month of, of testing. Now, there's various labels available online at various costs. And what I would say is if you're going to use labels then try and use the best labels that you can to um, not only you know look better, they look a bit neater and tidier, but the better ones tend to stick on for longer, um, the ink won't rub off, and it just looks a bit more professional. And especially with these, you know, if I'm putting on my company name onto these, um, you know, I want it to reflect my company um, as, as best as I can. So that's why I use these labels. But if, you, if you're just buying the cheap labels that you can get on eBay on rolls of 200 and you need to write in the appliance number or you write in the date, absolutely nothing wrong with these as well. Um, but I just think a, a label of any type um, just looks better to the client that you're testing for. Um, and then if they are going to a venue and they can readily see past labels applied, just makes it look like you're taking care of the equipment. The equipment has been tested properly. Um, so I, you know, I get these labels through um, a company online. They cost about three or four pence a label. Um, you buy the cheaper ones on a roll, they cost about one or two pence. Okay, so that's the labeling. And then I'm going to take you up to here and then I'm going to show you um, what I use. Um, let me just click on the right one here. Um, there we are. So I use a software from Seawood called PackGuard 3. Um, and again, uh, this is via a Seawood Apollo. So this was the Apollo 400 that I tested these bits of equipment on. Um, <coughs> but I've also got a, a Seawood 500. So it's a downloadable tester. You can use this PackGuard 3 software, which you need to buy a license for. So again, there is a, a cost involved. Um, but this gives um, a lot of predefined reports, as you can see here. So this is like a concise list. You can personalize it at the top with your logo and it has the date and the time. And it basically here gives you a, an asset list with asset IDs, descriptions, the date it was tested um, and the retest period. So you can change that on the machine. I've got various ones here. Um, and then it will give you a, a, a next test date. And obviously the there's a lot of discussion about the next test dates and in the recent uh, code of practice that's now down to the duty holder to decide um, how often you want that tested so you can reflect that in your test results so just important to say on your labels um, your labels should only re, uh, be giving the date it was tested 
and not a retest date. There's still some labels out there. They're called fourth edition labels. Um, uh, sorry, third edition labels um, where they have the retest date. But there is no requirement now. There's no need to put a retest date on the items because lots of different items have lots of different retest dates. Um, so that's the concise list that we do here. And if I just click on here, um, you can also do a detailed test list. And this basically on this piece of software, it gives every single test that is done. So the earth continuity test, the visual inspection, the insulation resistant test, and then an overall pass. It gives you the, the test machine that it was done from, um, and the asset ID and any comments as well that you want to put in. So obviously with this PackGuard 3 software, there is a, a cost involved, um, but you can still do it the old fashioned way. So if you're not testing very many items, um you can still use uh, there's books out there you can buy like carbon copy books where you can write all of your test results in and keep a copy for you and give a copy to the customer um you can do it just um in a spreadsheet if you wanted to um so there's lots of various options there so if if, if you're just starting out doing it small scale don't feel that you have to invest lots in the in the software this software is great and it might be a time in the future where you'd be able to invest in this software um, and it is an investment it's, it's not an expense it's it's an investment you will reap the rewards of, of time saving um, and it looks it looks more professional to send you a client if you and if you're testing thousands of items on a job um, this software really is is helpful but I mean you know don't feel any way that you know if you're writing out your results still in the old fashioned way you know that's that's no less um um what's the word it's no not any worse doing it that way than it is you know doing it this way on the computer they they they're equally both as valid um and if and if you're supplying your customer with what they want as in they need proof of pack testing then then anyway um is equally valid so i hope that helps hope you get something uh, out of that if you've got any questions uh, please do write them in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe the channel too uh, if you've got any ideas of any videos that you want doing then please do let me know and i can add them to the list thanks very much